All right. Welcome to the fourth installment of the Muscle and Strength Nutritional Pyramid. Um, we have talked about energy balance. We've talked about macronutrition. We've talked about micronutrition. And today we're going to talk about nutrient timing and frequency. That's in order of import. Next time we're going to talk about supplementation. And then our final episode we'll talk about behavior and lifestyle, which can affect and does affect all levels. All right. So, to put it in context, what is nutrient timing and frequency? It is how we distribute our calories, both big and acute, uh, kind of over the course of the whole diet, over the course of the week, over the course of the day. And we're going to talk about multiple different aspects of it. Um, let's just remind ourselves that this is the order of importance, meaning that if you were going to try to have a post-workout meal or something like that, and uh, it would take you over your macros target for the day or over your calorie target for the day, that would kind of be throwing the baby out with the bath water. Don't get your pyramid upside down. So, in order of importance. And without further ado, let's talk about the various pieces of nutrient timing and frequency. So we're going to go over three main things. Uh, macro slash calorie cycling, um, meal frequency, and peri-workout nutrition. So that means macronutrient or calorie cycling, that means uh, over the course of periods of your diet or different days of the week, having different macros uh, like carb cycling or a refeed or a diet break, that type of thing, or different calories. And then meal frequency, it means how many times do you consume nutrients in a day? That might be the old school recommendation of six to eight meals per day if from the IPB Pro, or that might be uh, like the intermittent fasting crowd saying two to three meals per day in a certain window. Um, and we'll talk about the merits of all those and what why might I recommend. And then we'll talk about peri-workout nutrition, which is around workout nutrition. Uh, we're going to talk about these in the context, again, of both a cut and a lean gaining phase what makes sense, what I recommend, why, and without further ado, let's talk, to, talk about macro and calorie cycling. Okay, so big picture first, uh, we have diet periodization. We talked about this recently in some other video, but basically uh, having periods of your diet where you have lower calories versus higher calories, okay? So first one I want to talk about, popularized by Lyle McDonald, but really is common sense, um, is a diet break meaning that instead of just dieting until you lose your mind and binge and gain back all the weight plus some that you were on, taking a planned break from the deficit. Uh, this can reverse some of those metabolic adaptations. It can allow you to get your training back in order, uh, to get your head right, and basically to catch a breath of fresh air before you dive back under and go through a deficit. I recommend this for people who are dieting, oh, let's say three months or longer. Uh, and have the time to do so. So contest prep, it can be great if you don't have a hard line date and if you're not under the gun or behind the eight ball. Uh, so if you have time to do so and you are ahead of the game as far as conditioning, a diet break can be awesome. So how do you do the diet break? I recommend, and these are kind of ballpark, eat as much as you can without gaining weight. So typically that's at least a 500 calorie increase concurrently with a drop of your cardio to about say 50%. So basically, you want to get away with as much as you can and then run that for one to three weeks. Uh, what might happen? You might put on a little bit of weight, and that's okay, because you'll lose it right back. You might start losing weight more effectively. I see this pretty frequently, and this is just kind of that metabolic uh, supercompensation that can sometimes happen. Um, or you might just maintain weight to feel awesome, feel better, and then be revitalized. Either way, all three outcomes are worth it. So if you can do it, do it. Okay, so that's big picture. Let's get down to... Uh, maybe a week or slightly more longer than less or sh shorter or longer than a week and that would be like a refeed or carb or macro cycling or calorie cycling. Um, some evidence there showing that uh, distributing your calories differently across days can result in better lean mass retention um, and some arguments based on uh, the way a lean body uh, has a leptin response to food and also the way that uh, subconscious energy expenditure, our NEAT, responds to overfeeding, that having a uh, high calorie day or days, maybe every week or every fourth day or fifth day, sixth day, whatever, might be a good idea. So how do we do that? I'm going to give you some loose recommendations so that when you're cutting, if you were 15% body fat or lower for a male, or if you are 23-24% uh, body fat or lower if you're a female, or if you find that you stall out easily when you start cuts, uh, almost regardless of where you're at, uh, kind of unexpectedly, after a week or two of dieting, I would recommend including a refeed. 
Easy way to do this, one day a week, you put it in maintenance calories. If you're not tracking macros, just put it at your maintenance calories. If you are tracking macros, keep your protein and fat roughly the same as your low days, unless your fat's really low, and then drive your carbs up until you hit maintenance calories. Easy way to do it. One refeed a week, that works for 80, 90% of, of cases, okay? So, now, if you're lean gaining, uh, obviously you wouldn't need a diet break, and um, would you need to cycle your macros or your calories? Probably not, at least for maximizing the outcome. However, it may be useful for consistency. Some people have a really tough time following a diet Monday through Friday, uh, or sorry, have an easy time following Monday through Friday, but on the weekends they have a really tough time not going over their macro targets. So just dropping those days a little bit, upping these days, sometimes can get you to hit your weekly energy balance better. So not a bad idea if it improved your consistency, okay? And as far as like carb cycling or having high days when you train, low days when you don't train, um, I'd say those are only useful in, in it's very specific cases. Like if you have extremely high energy expenditure on some days and then not on other days, not a bad idea. But for most people who are just doing resistance training, some cardio, work a regular nine to five, probably not needed, even in contest prep. Um, and essentially having a refeed is kind of carb cycling anyway. It's just not as frequent, okay? Meal frequency, this is how many meals do we eat in a day? Um, decent amount of uh, research here, not a whole lot. Investigating uh, pretty much everything from you know one all the way up to like 14. And limited investigation of like more reasonable meal, fre meal frequencies of four or five or three, or more, more just four and five. But collectively what we can say is that this doesn't make a huge difference uh, as far as the actual outcome of strength or lean body mass or fat mass. Uh, what we can say though is that some blips on the radar of issues start coming up when you get on the extreme end either way. When you start touching either uh, you know, two meals or six meals a day, you start running into issues with glucose regulation, uh, but more importantly, you run into issues with satiety or hunger, which can massively affect your consistency with the diet. So uh, my recommendation that's pretty conservative and just kind of combined with uh, both practical experience, theory, and the limited studies we have, is somewhere between three to five meals per day makes sense for a cut. Less than three, you tend to go long periods of time without food and that can affect your hunger negatively. And also you eat these very large meals that can develop sometimes not so hot relationships with food. More than five meals a day, six, seven, eight, something like that, you run into the opposite problem. You're constantly focused on food because you're having these tiny little meals that don't satisfy you. And you're constantly in need of uh, outside sources of, 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 of glucose to keep blood sugar levels stable so you're not as, uh, as good at just regulating your energy and your mood and your blood sugar levels without food constantly coming in. So either way, below three or above five tends to create issues as far as consistency with the diet. That said, not a major thing. If you do fine on two meals per day or six meals per day, stick with it, that's great. I recommend the same thing for lean gaining, except if you have trouble getting in a large amount of calories with three to five meals, feel free to go to six or seven. Hunger is not really an issue while you're, while you're, while you're gaining, uh, and we're certainly not concerned about lean mass preservation. So if you need six or seven meals to get in 5,000 calories, awesome, okay? And finally, we have around workout nutrition. So um, there are arguments around uh, eating carbohydrates immediately post-workout to uh, get maximal glycogen replenishment. Uh, there are arguments around eating carbohydrates post-workout to spike insulin and be anti-catabolic to help us retain more muscle and gain more muscle long term. Uh, there are arguments to eat carbohydrate pre-workout to enhance performance and protein pre-workout to stimulate the, uh, the repair process early. So let's address all those. Uh, a, we don't need uh, glycogen replenishment in 90% of cases for bodybuilders. Uh, we're not doing multiple exhaustive bouts, and you will get full glycogen replenishment within a 24-hour period, even on a moderate carbohydrate diet. Um, if you were to do a regular weight training workout, let's say 9 to 12 sets for a body part, it might deplete it as much as 40% of its glycogen levels. Then you won't train it again for two to maybe seven days, depending on your training program. So that won't be an issue, because you will definitely replenish that body part by then. Um, insulin also gets spiked by protein. Uh, and more importantly than that, if you look at all the studies uh, that actually look at the changes in muscle mass and strength over multiple weeks of having either post-workout uh, protein and carbohydrate or not, uh, or having that, that same protein and carbohydrate later in the day, only a minority of them uh, seem to show a benefit to those things. So, post-workout nutrition, 
not as important as we once thought in the context of someone just doing resistance training. That said, if you're doing uh, cardio, especially anaerobic cardio like HIT, and resistance training, or if you're doing a high volume program and you're on low carbohydrates and you're dieting, um, maybe something to it. So my kind of safe recommendation is for if you're cutting, wouldn't be a bad idea for one to two hours to one to two hours pre-workout, have a meal containing carbohydrates and protein, and to do the same thing post-workout. Um, these aren't hard lines set in the sand kind of rules, but it's kind of a safe bet for your cutting. There's no downside to eating uh, protein and carbohydrates around your training, and there are a few studies that show a benefit. So this is basically kind of maximizing any potential benefit, and then also just considering that what if you have to do a uh, hit session later in the day and legs in the morning, then you probably definitely want to have those carbs post-workout to make sure that you're ready for the hit session later in the day. Okay, so um, that would be my general recommendation for cutting. As far as your response to pre-workout nutrition, some people seem to get a benefit from carbohydrate for certain types of exercises. It tends to be very individual and inconsistent. Um, so play around with it. Um, if you eat too much, uh, too, too soon, or near to your workout, you're gonna feel GI upset. Um, if you, you know, don't eat for a very long period of time, you might get a little bit fatigued early, especially if you're doing a long workout. Um, so think about that, okay? Um, play with your pre-workout. General recommendation, normal size meal with protein and carbohydrate, one to two hours pre, one to two hours post when you're cutting. When you're lean gaining, you have a much bigger buffer. It doesn't matter as much. Uh, and I would say train with at least one meal containing protein in your body, and then you'll have the, uh, the protein floating around in you. On that note, the whole concept of either post or pre-workout protein, it may have a benefit, but consider this. It takes multiple hours to digest and absorb uh, protein. So if you're eating three to five meals per day, you're going to have protein in your body constantly. Um, so you're going to have the substrate to start the repair process pretty much at all times. And we've seen multiple studies, not multiple, we've seen a few studies show that the anabolic response to resistance training lasts a full day. And uh, if you train fasted, you get a higher anabolic response versus if you eat immediately. And it's not that it's either one's better, it's just that the body is capable of supercompensating when you don't have uh, immediate nutrients. So it can make up for what may or may not be there. Uh, and in the state of someone who has a lot of nutrients in a calorie surplus, uh, you know, high glycogen levels, constantly eating protein, it's just going to matter a lot less than if you're cutting. So general recommendation, lean gaining, uh, train with at least one meal containing protein in you, uh, and then your meals throughout the rest of the day will take care of all the other theoretical benefits. While you're cutting, uh, just to be safe, a meal one to two hours pre, and one to two hour post that both have protein and carbohydrate in them. Uh, for the unique instances where you may be doing two hours of continuous training, like if you're doing hit right after your leg day, or if you are just doing a really high volume program, or perhaps your uh, CrossFit guy is also lifting weights watching my channel or something like that, not a bad idea to have in a liquid form eight to 15 grams of protein and 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate mixed between pre and intra uh, during those two hours of continuous training. That would be something like half a scoop away in Gatorade. And this is your typical kind of actual endurance training intra workout recommendations that I would say. But really only needed if you were doing two hours plus of continuous hard training. Okay? Not an hour and 45 minutes, it just waits. I mean, literally more than two hours of hard training, which is probably not 80% of the people watching this. Okay? So let's bring it in. My pen's faded a little bit so I'll give you guys a better view. So, we are on nutrient timing and frequency. We've got three aspects of it that we covered. Macro and calorie cycling, okay? So if you're on a long diet during your cut, um, maybe if it's three months or longer, you wanna take maybe one to three weeks if you can and you have the time to budget where you go up about 500 calories, cut your cardio roughly in half and basically eat as much and do as little cardio as you can without gaining weight. Another good idea is if you're decently low in body fat, say 23% or lower for women, 15% lower for men, or if you find your progress stops pretty quickly, include a refeed, which is one day a week at roughly maintenance calories. Uh, while you're lean gaining, you only need to cycle your calories or your macros if it'll improve your consistency, like having more on the weekends and less on your weekdays. Next is meal frequency. How many meals do I eat in a day? 
and we're looking at three to five per day to maximize all theoretical benefits of lean mass retention and gain and to avoid running into any issues with satiety and hunger which are very important when you're cutting. Uh, when you're bulking that's a good place to start but feel free to have more meals if you need to get all your calories in, right? And that's only when you're lean gaining. Uh, and of course if you can do fine on slightly more or slightly less that's fine as well. That's a good recommendation for most people. Finally, we have peri-workout nutrition, which is around workout nutrition. Uh, a good, safe bet that may benefit you and at the very worst will not make a difference is one to two hours pre-workout and post-workout. Have a meal with carbohydrate and protein. And then if you are lean gaining, just try to have at least one meal that contains protein in your body by the time you hit the gym and the rest of the meals throughout the day will take care of it. If you're in the unique circumstance of doing two hours, of two hours or more of continuous training in a liquid form, we probably want 8 to 15 grams of protein and 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrates split between pre and intra. That could be, say, uh, essential amino acids, branched chain amino acids, or if you tolerate it well, uh, half a scoop of whey protein, uh, either concentrate or isolate, and 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate, which would be like your glucose, maltodextrin, etc. All right, folks. That is the fourth installment of the Muscle and Strength Nutritional Pyramid. I will talk to you guys next time.